Today, I finish up the MQL5 coding tutorial to calculate the value at risk of a two position portfolio. After this, we'll then be ready to finally move on to the calculations for any number of positions. And that, of course, is where this becomes real world. Stay tuned. DarwinX is a UK FCA regulated broker and asset manager on a mission to disrupt the financial trading, investing and asset management industries. If you're a talented trader looking to attract investor capital to your strategies, DarwinX is the fastest way for you to do this. We enable traders to raise third party investor capital and then charge success fees on high watermark profits. Additionally, DarwinX itself invests in its traders with our seed capital allocation program that allocates up to 90 million euros per year in successful trading strategies. So if all of that sounds interesting, learn more by clicking on the link here, or you can find further links in the description right below. Now back to today's tutorial. Once we can code value at risk for two positions, it's only then a relatively minor step up to adapt that for any number of positions. This then provides us with a tool set that can help us to inform our risk-based decision-making. And if we skip straight into the reminder of why we might want to do that, it's to help reduce drawdowns and smooth out the equity curve. So let's now switch over to the code as it was where we left it last time and finish this off for two positions. So where we got to last time, if you remember in the calculate VAR method, was that we'd calculated the standard deviation of returns for each of the positions. And then we calculated the correlation coefficient between the assets that underpin those positions and we were simply outputting that to a message box so that we could see the result. And for now, I'm going to leave the message box command in there because it's useful to see what the correlation is as we change the assets in a moment. But I'm going to remove the return statement so that the rest of the function now executes. So let's go through this step by step. The next thing we need to do is to get the nominal monetary values for each of the positions. So I'm just declaring an array here with a size of two to accommodate both of those positions. And then we set that for each of them here. Now, I'm not going to explain this in any detail here because I've done that in a previous episode when we looked at a single position. So if you need the rationale behind this calculation, I suggest you look up that previous episode. And incidentally, if you want to look up any of the previous episodes in this series, I put a link in the description right below that will take you to the playlist with the ordered episodes. So you'll find the episode that explains this monetary value calculation there. And then remember one of the things that we need for the value at risk calculation is what's called the portfolio investment amount, which I'm just calling portfolio nominal value here, which is the sum of these two values here. And you'll notice that I'm using the absolute value of those. And the reason for that is because if we're holding these positions short, then the monetary value in these calculations will be negative. So to get that effective total amount of investment, we just simply make sure both of those are positive before we sum them to give us our value. Now, this next part is another part that will be significantly different compared with when we did this for a single position. And if I just bring up the formula that sits behind this for a moment, it's this one. So if you remember, it was the weight of the first position squared multiplied by the standard deviation of the first position squared. Similarly for the second position here. And then we have this third term, which incorporates rho or the correlation between those two assets. And it's this that provides us with the overall portfolio standard deviation. Now, if the correlation is positive, this effectively adds a value onto the individual ones you see here. Whereas if rho is negative, so the two assets that underpin these positions are negatively correlated, or the correlation is positive, but we're holding one long and the other short, 
then this will actually subtract a value from these first two terms. So it will effectively reduce the portfolio of standard deviation, which if you think about it, makes perfect sense. So if I just move this down, you'll then see how I have coded this in MQL5. So the first thing I've done is calculate weight one and weight two. And effectively, that's these W1 and W2 values that we see in all three terms here. Now, you'll notice that I don't use the absolute values here, and this is intentional. We can have negative weightings. And let's think about the effect that that has in the calculation here. Well, firstly, in the first two terms, it has no effect at all because we're squaring each of those weights. And so they're going to end up positive regardless. But it does have an effect in the third term. If one weight is positive and the other is negative, multiplying weight one by weight two will give us a negative value. It means we've effectively got one position long and one position short. And so it's that that effectively changes the correlation, maybe from a positive value to a negative or the other way around, because we're holding those positions in opposite directions. Because remember, the correlation has always been calculated on the basis that you're holding the two assets in the same direction. So keeping these as signed variables here, make sure that this all gets calculated properly. And so it's fairly simple now to see how the portfolio standard deviation calculation here represents the formula we have below. We have the first weight raised to the power of two multiplied by the standard deviation of returns for that asset to the power two. We have the same underneath here for the second position. And then we have two, which is the two you see here, multiplied by weight one, weight two, the correlation coefficient, which of course is rho, and it's this that we calculated in the previous episode, multiplied by the two standard deviation of return values, which are represented with the sigmas here. And then of course, the whole of that is then subject to a square root. And so that is our portfolio standard deviation of returns now calculated. And that, if you remember, is one of these three terms in the value at risk calculation. We have the z-score, which is 1.65, multiplied by that portfolio standard deviation, multiplied by the overall investment amount in it, which if you remember is this portfolio nominal value here. And so with that done, we now have a two position value at risk calculation, which of course will be in monetary terms. And if we're just using Forex, which always gets calculated in your account currency, for me, this will be in British pounds. And then we simply return true. We don't need to return this value here because this is one of the public properties in the class, as you can see here. And so from our calling script, which if you remember is very simple, really, all of the work is taking place in the risk management class. To get that value, we can just reference it with the name of the object we've created, portfolio risk, dot two position var. And then we can print that out from the script. I've obviously restricted that to two decimal places given that it's a monetary value. So let's now try this for two positions. The first one will be in EuroCAD, which will be 0 0.1 in size. So that's a long position because that's a positive value. And Australian dollar, Japanese yen, which is also a long position of size 0.1 lots. So let's just compile that. So if we now switch over to MT5 and run that script, we'll just stick with our default values for the number of periods for the standard deviation calculations and the correlation calculation. And the first message box that we get is the correlation value between the two assets. And we can see here that the correlation is negative, but only slightly, negative 0 0.152. And then the next value is the value at risk for those two positions. And we can see that it's 71 pounds and 33 pence. So in VAR terms, what this means is that if we held these two positions for a full day, one day in every 20 or 5% of the time, we should expect a loss of 71 pounds 33 or more. 
And then for the other 19 days, we'd obviously expect either a smaller loss or a profit on those two positions. Now, the negative correlation that we saw here will actually be helping to keep the risk down. But if we change one of these positions so that it is a short position, that then effectively means that the correlation between the two positions is now positive. And so this should have the effect of increasing the value at risk. So let's recompile, come back to MT5, run this again. Now, the correlation coefficient is still being printed out as negative here, because remember, that's between the two assets, and these two assets are negatively correlated. However, because we've changed one of the positions now to be short, the correlation between the positions, not the assets, the correlation between the positions will now be positive. And because of that, we see that it's gone up now to £82.80, pence, which is exactly what we would have expected to happen. Now, let's come back and choose a couple of assets that are going to be even more correlated and take a look at what happens in that situation. So with EuroCAD, let's choose as an example EuroUSD. And because both of these positions are sharing that Euro component, we'd expect these to be much more correlated. And let's just for now make them both long positions. So this should again have the effect of increasing the risk even further. So let's compile, come back to MT5. And firstly, indeed, we can see that the correlation is just a little under 0 0.6 here. So as I suspected, it is a higher correlation between these two assets. And then the value at risk now has gone up fairly considerably to £115, which again makes sense. But let's come back and make one of our positions a short position and recompile. And what we'd expect here is a really low value at risk, because typically when one of these positions moves up, the other one will move down and vice versa. And because we're holding one short and one long, that should really help to reduce any significant losses. So coming back to MT5, so we see the same correlation value that we did before, because remember this is the correlation for the assets themselves. In terms of the value at risk, this has gone down to just £57.82. So the lowest value at risk that we've seen in this particular episode. So we've now looked at the theory, an Excel example, and an MQL5 example for a two asset portfolio. So now it's time to get real world and start looking at N position portfolios, any number of positions. And in the next episode, I'll firstly cover the theory. Following that, we'll again look at an Excel example. And in this case, we'll just use three assets because at this point, there's really a tipping in the balance of the complexity between doing this in Excel and doing it in code. And for anything more than three assets, it becomes quite cumbersome and complex to do it in Excel. It can be done. But when we look at the calculation, you'll understand why that becomes much more complex. However, in code, it doesn't. And as long as we set up our loops for the calculation properly, regardless of whether it's three or more assets, the complexity remains the same. And so it makes sense to jump straight into the code to calculate this n position value at risk. And we'll do that in episode 18. OK, so thank you for your time again. I hope it's all becoming clear how we perform these calculations. If you are getting value, then please do remember to give me a thumbs up for this and the other episodes in the series. But now until next time, trade safe.